Romans 22, bottom of the page. in our mind and the things that we are searching for they're sure
people, ordinary people, people like me and you. Sing a deadly dance, step into the edge of sin. Whoops, you fall right in. You better lean, yeah. lean, 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 lean to the right. Don't you lean? Sometimes, sometimes sin is very sly, and it makes you question why. When the Lord says, thou shalt not, watch out, you'll yeah. get caught, right. you better lean, 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 lean to the right. Don't you lean, 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 lean to the wrong. Yeah. Stay away from sin or you might. the right. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't want to lean to the wrong. Stay away from sin. Because you might fall in. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody else got something on the heart tonight for the Lord? How many have your Bibles? Yes. All right, I've been requesting Brother Keith. You pray for Brother Keith. Lift him up to the Lord. I start to say as he preaches what God lays on his heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's praying, I can feel it. Somebody's praying for me. Mighty hands are guiding me to protect me from what I can't see. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Somebody's praying for me. Angels are watching. I can feel them. Angels are watching over me. Miles ahead till I get home. Still I'm safely kept before your throne. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, angels are watching over me. Well, I've walked the barren wilderness where my pillow was a stone, and I've been through the darkest caverns where no light had ever shone, still I went on. Cause there was someone who was down on their knees. Lord, I thank you for yes. those people praying all this time for me. Somebody's praying, I can feel it. Somebody's praying for me. 
Mighty hands are guiding me to protect me from what I can't see. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Somebody's praying for me. Glad somebody prayed for you. My, my. That ought to put memories. That ought to put thoughts in your mind. Hallelujah. People that's been close to you spiritually. A mom or a dad. Husband or wife. Hallelujah. God's good. How many have your Bibles with you tonight? Amen. Let's lift them up for the Lord. Give God a good wave off them with the Holy Scripture and burst the flesh. Uh, before... Uh, before I tell you to turn anywhere, I'd like to point some scripture. Amen. Who, who'd want to who'd want to read a scripture for me? Raise your hand. All right, Tori, Acts chapter number six. Acts chapter number six, verse number one. Okay, who else will help me? All right, brother um, Stacy. Um, Acts chapter eleven. Keith, did you raise your hand? Chapter 16, Acts chapter 16. I'll tell you the verses when I get there, all right? All right, if you will, turn with us to the book of Acts, chapter 2. We've got several scriptures, amen, we're going to read from. Uh, Acts chapter 2. Simple thought tonight, and and I, I hope it's it's going to go along with uh, this uh, soul winning class, Amen. That we're going to, God just seemed to impress me to go that way. If you will, honey, there you go. Um, tonight, I tell you, every time I get something like this, the enemy says, "Don't do it." I'll be honest with you; they're getting tired. Uh, he'll come and get on my shoulder and he'll say they're getting tired of hearing that. Well, I've just identified the enemy. And uh, that's even more the reason to do this class. God has showed me today if we don't start it, it'll never get started. If uh, And I've talked to Brother Travis about it in... Uh, we're going to get those things ordered. And I, when I say that, uh, did, they, did they tell you about shipping on those things? I hope they got that many at one time available. They do? Okay. How long do you think it take to ship those things? See, so if we don't get them, I'm wanting to get, I'm wanting to get it started, all right? So... Uh, I believe it's very, very important. Let's, let's just bow our heads. Let's ask God's blessings upon the reading of the Scripture. And how many going to pray for the preacher? Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray now, Lord, that you'd take a call from off the altar, anoint this old stammering tongue, protect our tongue tonight. God, I pray, God, that you would say no more, no less than that that you'd have uh, said in this service. God, if there's any lost, save them, backslid, and reclaim them. Lord, I pray, help us to be that soul winner. God, help us to be that, uh, that Christian, dear God, that is soul conscience. Lord, I pray, dear Father, that we have that burden, dear Father, for that lost man, woman, boy, and girl. And help God this effort. And God, help us to see how important it is. And God, how that it is a command in the Word of God. I love you. Lord, if again, Lord, meet each need tonight. We'll give you praise. And we'll give you honor. And all God's people said, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. <clears throat> verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now I want you to grasp something tonight, and I'll get a little bit more into it later. It's probably going to be a little different message when I say that. Well, 3,000 souls were added that day. Now let's go to chapter number 5. Acts chapter 5 
in verse number 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes both of men and women. 3,000 and then multitudes. 3,000 then multitudes. You may be seated on that. And if you have your Bibles, you can just, um, if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 28, amen, we'll go to the Great Commission. I'm going to have to, I'm going to do a little bit of confessing uh, tonight. When I say confessing, I never forget as a young man, just by introduction, never forget as a young man, uh, just starting out in the Lord and, uh, talk, well, actually starting out preaching after I accepted the call to preach. I never forget I was in uh, the old McDonald's building. I'm not talking about the McDonald's that are sitting there now, but the old McDonald's building. And I had another preacher, I don't think he was a pastor, I don't believe it was, uh, but another preacher came up to me and uh, he made a comment about the Great Commission. Uh, a man wanted, in other words, he, he was asking me something about the Great Commission and what I thought about it or how, he, he may have made, made a, he didn't ask me, I don't think, in a question, he just made a statement and uh, I'll be honest. And I'm ashamed to say it, but I left thinking, Brother Keith, what is the Great Commission? And I'm going to tell you about this is what, uh, I've never told my wife that. I've never, I've never shared that with nobody. But I left thinking, well, what's he talking about? How many in here knows what the Great Commission is? If you do, raise your hand. You know that. You say, I know that. Well, if you're in here and you don't know what the Great Commission is, don't be ashamed that you don't know it. Amen. Don't be ashamed that you don't know it because you're looking at a, a, a man, a man that when I was young in the Lord, the Lord had just, I just professed the call to preach. I'm going to just be on and that's, that's part of learning. And I think the problem in our churches today is you got a, I believe you got people, amen, that are, I'm talking about Christian people that are sitting in our churches that don't know what the Great Commission is. And you know what? That's sad into the fact that we don't have pastors standing behind the pulpit teaching the whole counsel of God. We got problems in our churches today. Amen. Most people think, amen, church is just a place to come to say I went to church on Sunday. It's a social gathering. Uh, a lot of people think we just come to the house of the Lord to, um, to, uh, to make a statement. Uh, amen. But let me tell you something. It's more, amen, than just coming to church. And uh, well, I didn't mark this down, but I'm going to turn to it, and I didn't even mark it in my Bible. Uh, but in Deuteronomy, let's see if I get this uh, let me see if I get this right. Make sure I wrote down the, the right scripture. Um, I'll give it to you in just a second. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter number 1 and verse number. In verse number 10. Deuteronomy chapter number 1 verse number 10. The Lord your God hath multiplied you. And behold you are this day as the stars of heaven. For multitude. I believe, amen, uh, that God, just by introduction, I believe there's a, I believe the Word of God teaches us there's an adding of people. I believe that the Word of God in Deuteronomy talks about the multiplying of people. All God's people say it. And then here in uh, Matthew chapter number 28 and verse 19 and 20, amen, we have the, uh, amen, the Great Commission. The Bible says there, and in Jesus speaking in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That is the Great Commission. How many believe, amen, that that's not just for the pastor? How many would agree that that's not just for the, uh, amen, the deacon board? 
Uh, amen. How many agree that uh, if you're a part of the church and you're a part, I'm not talking about just going home church, but the church of the living God, how many, how many would agree with this preacher that that includes you? Amen. All right, then if that includes you, amen, then you have a part. Now when I say the Great Commission is in three parts, it's to get somebody saved. Number one, to get somebody saved. Now, I'm not telling you that you, now, when I use get somebody saved, don't nobody go and misunderstand or, or misquote what I'm saying. First, you can't save nobody. Amen. When I, when I use the phrase get somebody saved, that's you pointing somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I said it's in three parts. Number one is to help win somebody to the Lord. It's to get somebody born again. And number two is to get them to follow the Lord, walk down the aisle to a water baptism. I'll say that again. He says there, what is the great commission? He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. What are you teaching them? Amen. You're to, you're to teach them, amen, the, amen, the basics of salvation. Pointing them to Christ, baptizing them. Somebody said, now, preacher, I've never heard you preach on you got to be baptized. Oh, yeah. Now, I didn't say that's essential, amen, to, uh, amen, to salvation, to going to heaven because, hey, you, somebody said, well, preacher, what if you ain't baptized? Amen. Now, now don't nobody misquote me here neither. I, hey, if you couldn't go to heaven without being baptized, amen, then the thief on the cross is in hell, and I don't believe that. But here, here it is. I believe we have to, I believe we need to follow Christ in water baptism. All God people say it. And for you that say, I've never been baptized, I'm, I'm afraid of water. What do they call that? What do you call somebody afraid of water? Scared, amen. Hydrophobic. Whatever. And you say, well, I'm scared of water. Amen. Listen, uh, I know that there is such a thing, uh, I mean, a fear, amen, of being in water. Understand that. But you need to, you need to pray over that, amen, and, let, hey, and receive that blessing of following Christ in water baptism. How many believe that, uh, amen, uh, that Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20 is a command from the Lord? Amen. So if it's a command from the Lord, I want to do it. That's like Peter saying, hey, Lord, when he, when he come to him, I talked about washing his feet. Amen. Peter said, wasn't it Peter said, Lord, I ain't gonna, you ain't washing my feet. He said, hey, then you ain't going to have no part with me. Then what? That boy's attitude changed, didn't he? Amen. He said, I, not just my feet, but my head, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I'm telling you something. I want to make sure that I'm in this thing right. Amen. So, so I said it's in three points, three parts. Number one, we got to get them saved, amen. Then get them to walk down an aisle, amen, to water baptism. Amen. All God people said. So what's the third thing? It's to teach them to do likewise, amen. The Bible says there, teach them, them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So what are you saying? So it's to get them right with God, to get them to uh, walk down the aisle to, to water baptism, amen, and glory to God, amen, teaching them to do the same thing. Now, if you said that that was not just for the preacher, not just for the deacon, that that was for all God's children, my question to you is, who have you won to the Lord? Who have you won to Christ? I mean, we did, hey, you, you, if you walk out here tonight and say, Preacher, yeah, but it ain't for me, amen, then you're calling the word of God a lie. You know, my duty is to win somebody to the Lord. Do you know your duty is to win somebody to the Lord? Let's illustrate. Let's get somebody saved tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I'm going to get you saved. Amen, put your, put your Bible down. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to get you saved. Stand up here. Hallelujah. Lord, hey, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the basis of salvation. Amen. Hey, glory to God. I just, I just went through it. We're going we're gonna to learn this. She got right with God. Shout a little bit. Hallelujah. She got right with the Lord. Amen. Hey, you know what happens when she gets right with the Lord? If I want her to the Lord and she got right with the Lord, Hallelujah. And I get her to walk down the, uh, the aisle to water baptism to get saved. You know what my duty is? My duty is then to teach her. 
Hey man, my duty is to teach her, glory to God. Hey, and that's what this church is for, teach her how to go out and to get somebody else saved. See, she needs to go get somebody, go get somebody saved. Go get somebody saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on over here. <laughs> Come on over here. I thank God, and let's get off the note just a minute. Thank God I got her born again. And when I, now, I say God. Now, you got to, I led her to Christ. Don't nobody misunderstand Facebook. Don't misunderstand. I led her to Christ. Thank God I actually did help lead her to Christ. Amen. But you know what? It wasn't all me. You remember the nursing home, don't you? She was tearfully. Amen. So, so here's what I'm saying. Amen. So we led, I led uh, this lady to the Lord. She got right with God. Amen. Hey, she got baptized. Amen. I taught her how to go teach somebody else. Amen. Then what did she do? She went out. Amen. She led somebody to the Lord. Now she she, amen, help encourage her to walk down the aisle to water baptism, amen, and she's to help her. Now, if you can't one-on-one, -on -one, that's what the church's duty is. Hallelujah. Now, you go get somebody and I, hey, ask them if they want to be saved. Go get somebody. Now, this is a simple illustration, amen. Don't backslide, stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Thank the Lord. All right, now you take your convert and hold her by the hand. Glory to God. Now you turn around and face the audience. Now she got her. Hey, this ought to bless you just by this illustration. Hey, she got somebody. No, my, my, my. You know what she done? Amen, glory to God. She she went and she she talked to Tony Orange. Amen, he, glory to God. He, she gave him the gospel. Now why? Why did she do that? Because she had been taught. She got saved. She got born again. Her life got changed. And she led, glory to God. Hallelujah. And then glory, she learned how to lead somebody else to God. Amen. Now Tony's saved. Hallelujah. You know what's going to happen, amen, now? Amen. It, it ain't, hey, glory to God, it ain't just what, uh, thank God it's a, it's a rippling effect. It ain't, a, it ain't a rappling effect. It's a rippling effect. That's a, that's a joke, amen. So what are you saying? Glory to God, do you know what's going to happen? Amen, then it's so on and so on. Tony, amen, if he gets saved, he, he got saved, he gets baptized, amen, he gets, he gets taught how to do it. Amen. Glory to God. You know what's going to happen? Tony's going to go out and he, glory to God, he's going to win somebody to the Lord. Uh, you know that bucket list we had a couple Sundays ago? Amen. The, the, the folks that put, some of the folks that put on there, I'd like to win somebody to the Lord. Here's your opportunity. How many in this congregation would like to win somebody to the Lord? Personally, you'd like to win somebody to the Lord. You're getting ready to. Hallelujah. You just may be seated. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know that's a, a simple, amen, uh, il illustration, amen. But you know what? That's the process, and that's what we're supposed to do, and that's what's going to happen, and that's what's going to help you in this twelve weeks of this study, amen, on trying and helping somebody, winning somebody to the Lord. Can I get a witness there? And listen, we are not fulfilling the great commission. We're not fulfilling our duty as a Christian. And we're not, I need you to listen, we're not fulfilling our duty as a Christian and we're not fulfilling our duty as a church if we don't do this. How many people, how many churches are you seeing do it? You said that right, that's a good point. Listen. <laughs> it's my duty it's your duty but a shepherd don't produce a sheep now don't misunderstand what I say there sheep produce sheep everybody with me glory to God in other words the flock I, I take care as a pastor but you know what I'm a sheep but when I say a pastor I pastor you I'm the shepherd over you. Amen. You're the one, amen, now including me, but I'm just talking to me in reality as a pastor, amen, but you're the one that produces sheep. 
Now, when I say that tonight, amen, listen, I mean, the great commission in here in Matthew 28 is more than just getting somebody saved, leading somebody to the Lord. We're not for fulfilling our duty as a Christian or a church if we don't do that. How many churches are you seeing do it? How many churches, I believe you didn't answer that in your mind. How many, how many church members and Christian people are doing this? I hope you don't get sick of it, but I'm going to tell you something. We need, to, we need to be a church that is a soul-winning church. Hey, God's just burdened my heart. Amen. Listen, it's God's plan. It, this is God's plan to reach the next generation. I mean, listen to me. What about the next generation? What about our family? What about our grandchildren? Amen. Did you hear me tell you about the story about the little boy? I done it recently that met me in Walmart. The little Hispanic boy, Amen. I think he was five. He was either he was either he he had to be about five, six, seven year old. Did I show him? Did I show him to you, or show you to him? Amen. He came. I, I seen his mama. I seen his two. I think I think there was two brothers and a sister, maybe. Amen. And I seen them walking through Walmart. This is before Christmas, and I seen them walking through there. And all of, I, man, they was clean cut. She had a dress on. They were. They had neckties on. I knew, brother Keith, they had been to the house of the Lord. And I, I passed them, and all of a sudden, I, I ran in, into them. Amen. Coming out of a, the drink aisle down there. Amen. Where I go get my dot sun kissed. Amen. Amen. And as they got as they got coming out, amen. I noticed as they rounded the corner and I went in, I noticed the little boy running back. His running back. I'm talking about five, six, seven year little year old little boy running back. Hispanic little boy. I, he was he might how old are you, Evan? Five. He probably was six, six. I'd say somewhere along in there. Hey man, he came running back and he said, Excuse me, sir. I turned around, and I can't remember exactly how I told it. I thought I told it here. Didn't I tell it here? How? how? But anyway, I, I said, uh, I said uh, I, he, he said, excuse me, sir. He said, and I couldn't really, I couldn't hardly understand him. He said, are, are you sure? He, he said, if you should die today, do you know that you'd go to heaven? <laughs> then he said, "There's a, and he didn't. Hey, he was persistent. He didn't. I, I said, I said yes. I said I've been saved. He, I said yes. I know. I'm 100 sure I'd go to heaven when I die." He said, "Why?" A six and seven year old little boy. He said, "Why?" I said, "Because I've asked Jesus, and I, I began to tell him how. Because I, I confess my sin, I asked him. He said, "There's a sinner's prayer. Would you like to pray it?" I said, "Well, I've done asked the Lord." He said, "But they are a prayer uh, that you need to pray. Would you like to pray?" Well, I thought I ain't letting this little old boy. Hey, Amen. I'm not going to let him get, hey, leave thinking he didn't do his duty. You said you misled him. No, I done told him, but he was persistent for me to say the the, the, the believer's prayer. Can I get a witness there? So I said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'd like to. You said, but you shouldn't have done that. You was misleading that. But no, I wasn't. I was helping that little six, seven-year-old boy. Hallelujah. You know what I was doing? I was encouraging him because I didn't see that I could. He, he was so persistent. Hallelujah. And so when I finally agreed to it, his other little brother, and I seen him. I was praying with one eye open. Because I was really, not that I was afraid he's going to do it. I just was really wanting to see what was going on. Everybody with me? So his other little brother, and he was probably eight or nine years old. He was older. Anyway, he said, well, close your eyes. And this, he said, now close your eyes and repeat after me. So I closed my eyes. Hey, man, his little brother run up behind him. Now, he had already started. So he started Believer's Prayer. So I, I repeated after him. And his little, his little brother was a telling him, making sure he told him right and he was repeating it right. So we got through the believer's, hallelujah, got through the believer's prayer. He said, now, sir, he said, what's your name? I said, my name's Jeff Duncan. He said, what did he say your name was? I thought I tried to remember that. Anyway, he told me his name. He said, well, he said, well Jeff Duncan, he said, my name is so-and-so. And he said, now when you die, you get to go to heaven when you die. Hallelujah. 
something to that, hallelujah, because something to that nature. Can I get a witness there? Seven, hey, I, I don't know. He's about to be six, seven years old. Hey, Amen. But you know what? Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Now, how many, hey, if that little boy can do it, uh, is anybody getting excited about anything? If that little boy can do that. You say, well, what if he's rejected? I guarantee you he's been told to get away. I guarantee you he's been told to go on to find his mama. Amen, but he was so persistent. Hey, we need to instill in each other. Hey, that's what this course is for. Hey, we need to be birthing sheep into the family of God. Amen, because people are dying and going to hell. People are dying and going to hell. Oh, let me tell you something. One, Get you convert. Stand back up there. Amen. One plus one. Come on up here. One plus one equals. Now go get you convert. Hallelujah. Simple tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Everybody with me? Tony? Go get somebody saved. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Just get one. Amen. I'm making my point. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what happened? Amen. Tony went and got him one. Hallelujah. Why? Because his convert, amen, got him, hey, got, came to him, amen, gave him Jesus, he gave his heart and life to the Lord, followed in water baptism, hallelujah, and he, is a, he was taught how to win somebody else. One plus one is two plus two is Boy, four plus four, eight plus eight. Glory to God, now you can go sit down. I know, you know, sometimes I know that's a simple analogy. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. You, there's some numbers that God uses in the Bible. Did you know that? Did you know that God uses certain numbers in the Bible? I mean, let's see if you can uh, <coughs> relate to some of these. Let me give you, when, when I say this, numbers were used by, God, used by God for many things in the Word of God. I mean, so, so you say, so, preacher, what do you do? so let me just give you a test. See if you can answer. In Matthew 19 and verse 28, how many tribes of the, uh, how many number of tribes were of the, uh, were the, were of the children of Israel? Twelve. All right. In Mark 9, 35, what was the number of apostles? Twelve. In John 6, 10, how many men were fed with one little boy's lunch, five loaves and two fish? Five thousand. Acts 2, 41, how many souls were added to the church? I just read that to you, didn't I? Three thousand, amen. In 1 Kings eleven three, 3, Solomon had how many wives? Lord, have mercy. Amen. You're right. He had 700 wives. Amen. How many? No. Amen. How many concubines did he have? 300 concubines. Somebody said, what's a concubine? Well, this don't go there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, it, it, glory to God. It was a substitute wife is what he was. <laughs> 7, 8, 9, glory, a, a thousand. <laughs> Adam said, you're right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, how many is getting where I'm going? That is illegal though now. Oh God, people say, I'm talking man, man, say, man, one of the wisest men in the Bible besides the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the wise, can I get a witness there? Oh, my. That might be a study. All God people say it. Acts 1, 15, how many, how many was praying in the upper room? Amen. Anybody know the answer to that? 120. Matthew 25, 1, how many virgins took their lamps to meet the bridegroom? 10. How many, how many of those 10 was wise? How many was foolish? 
Five. Amen. Listen, First Corinthians 5 and 6. How many seen Jesus after, he, after his resurrection? How many saw him? 500. How many, how many gets where I'm going tonight? What are you saying? I'm saying, listen, numbers were used by God for many things in the Bible. I mean, for some reason, God chose to use numbers. He didn't have to tell us how many wives Solomon had. Concubines he had. He didn't have to tell us how. I mean, thank God that he did, but he's there for a reason. But I'm saying he used numbers. I mean, and not only that, amen, God numbered many things, amen, in the word of God. I mean, Job 14, 16, God numbers our steps. Do you know, Lord, ever how many steps, how many's got one of these watches that, that tells you how many steps you take during the day? Raise your hand, I don't see them. Hey man, if you, all right, if you if you if you monitor that today, I start to say seventy three steps. You ain't doing nothing, brother. Seventy three hundred steps. Do you know that everybody in here, God knows how many steps you took today. And by the way, if He numbers our steps, He knows. Hey, He knows when one of those steps might be veering to the to the temptation. Everybody with the preacher, I mean, listen, God knows, amen, how many steps, amen, but he's conscious of every step. Matthew 10 and 30, God numbers the very number of hairs on our head. You, I know you know that, but he knows how many hair is on our head. I was gonna ask Savannah tonight. She took cosmetology, I did too, but that was years ago. Amen, they might know how many hairs is on the average normal head, I don't know. Amen. Somebody tell me redheads got more hair than anybody else. I don't know. That's what I've heard. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. Amen. He knows how many's fell out. Ain't that, ain't that right, Travis? I got to get you back. <laughs> and mine's have fallen out. But he still knows. I mean, listen, God numbers the hair. I mean, why, why would God tell us that? Amen. I mean, do, hey, aren't you glad? I mean, every hair, amen, has a place. I'm trying to teach you, amen, that, hey, God deals with numbers. It was so important he named the book after it. God deals with numbers. He knows the, even the number of hair on our head. Job 38, 37, God numbers the clouds. Do you know that we have clouds? Do you know the clouds in the sky? God knows how many they are all over this world. I mean, it suggests that. Amen. It suggests in Job 14, 5 that God numbers the months of our life. You believe that? Job 15, 20, God numbered, hey, it suggests that God numbers the year. Psalm 147, 4, it suggests that God numbers the stars that's above. I'm trying to tell you tonight, amen, listen, amen, God numbered many things, amen, in the word of God. And let me just say, thirdly, amen, listen, oh my. God is interested in numbers. I mean, I believe the increase of numbers. Acts chapter 6, uh, Tori, Acts chapter 6, you got it marked? Uh, chapter 6, verse number 1. Ministration. All right, go back to the first part of that and read it real loud one more time. Just the first part, I'll tell you when to stop. And in those days when the people, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Well, stop right there. When the number of the disciples were multiplied. God deals in addition, multiplication. Are you with me? He also deals in subtraction. Did you know that? That's for another day, amen. Do, do verse number seven, Adam. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied and grew in the greater, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. A number of the disciples were what? Multiplied. 
What is a disciple? Amen. A disciple, hey, is a disciplined learner, is what a disciple is. It's a, hey, you know why? It's because, man, glory to God, they were out, hey, they were out winning souls. They were out telling, hey, man, hey, it's the salvation plan. Acts 11 21. And a great number. Chapter 16, verse 5. And it was numbered in the faith and increased. Can I get a witness there? I mean, listen, you know what they done? They won souls. I mean, increasing in the church. I mean, the Lord's interested. How many say amen right there? Now, fourthly, let me say, remember, people are not numbers. We got to remember that people are not numbers. Now, I know that they just numbered those. Know that they were souls that were not. But we don't look, need to look at it like people are numbers. We don't have this soul winning class, amen, to fill this church up to get a number. To get a number on a board, amen. Hey, I, hey, we need to remember that we need to reach the individual, amen. And why? Hey, when I say that, hey, the, the individual needs Sunday school is not just numbers. Hey, hey, Lord, we know that we know that in our Sunday school. Somebody say amen right there. Now, hey, listen, hey, listen. There's not a rich number. There's not a poor number. Amen. We need to remember, amen, that people are not numbers, although we do number those. I'll get to maybe that in a minute. Listen, hey, I, I'm not a number. Hey, Adam Jolly's not number 13. He's not number one. He ain't 356. All God people said, he ain't a number. He's a child of God. He's an individual. We need to, hey, we need to make sure that we focus on the needs, not as a number, but the need of the individual. Amen. Amen. Fifthly, let me say, never focus on a big number of people. Now, I know that goes along, amen, with what I just said. Amen, when I say that, focus on the individual and the need. We need to preach and teach, amen, and God the Holy Ghost can reach everybody. If I was up here and amen, there's 500 people sitting out there, let me tell you something, I can't reach all 500 people. I'm talking about in the congregation. I can't reach all 500 people. I can't reach all 100 people. Amen. Hey, I might not can reach all 50 people. What are you getting at? But the Holy Ghost that lives in me, hallelujah. Amen, when I preach or when you teach or when I teach, hey, that Holy Ghost in me, hey, it can reach all the 500 people. Glory to God. Amen. Listen, it ain't, it ain't the preacher that reaches them. It ain't the preacher that saves them. It ain't the teacher that reaches them. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. Hey, I can't. Glory. Hallelujah. God the Holy Ghost can speak and will speak through the preacher. You know what we need to do? Amen. We need to pray, the, we need to pray for the Spirit on us as Sunday school teachers. When the last time you Sunday school teacher said, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'll say it again. How many teachers have said, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. You know what? That's very important for you to teach those children and to teach these adult classes. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. How I many preachers fill me with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Why? Because you can't read. There's times I get done and I think, man, I made a whole total mess of this thing. Feel about that big when I get done. But you know what? It ain't up to me. Amen. It's up to the Holy Ghost. Let me say, sixthly, reach everybody you can. Pentecost. Let me tell you something. When I say reach everybody you can, Pentecost has added 3,000 souls. Fed 5,000. I, I don't believe at Pentecost they just said, um, I, I, there probably are 3,000 souls here. No. I believe they had a counter. Because when it said 3,000 souls, were added 
Somebody had to count. Do you count this? I see you up there counting sometimes. I see you up there and you, man, you know what he's doing? Hey, man, for the preaching service, I see him accounting. There's other times in special services, I see you accounting. Do you know that's a good thing to do? Glory to God, maybe we ought to keep up on how many, what are we averaging in Sunday school? We might ought to keep up with that this year. You got it, don't you? Amen. Glory to God. Need to get, hey, we, I don't, I, maybe we ought to keep account on how many is on Wednesday night. You say, well, why would we do that? Yeah, I thought you said you, ain't need, you don't need to focus on numbers. Why? It might help us, amen, to get more encouraged. Amen. Glory. It, it all works around. Amen. amen. In the book of Mark, there's 4,000 that were fed. All God people said. You think they said, oh, I believe, I, well, I just recollect that there's, well, let's look across the crowd. There's, there's about 4,000. No, that ain't what he said. 4,000. Oh, there's about 5,000. No, 5,000. And that was beside men and women. I mean, for the, the children and the women. Can I get a witness there? Jesus used number. I mean, thank God for the cards. I mean, we heard how many cards that had been sent out, amen, this past year. How many phone calls and emails and, amen, and how, how many visits, the bus visit. That encourages my heart, and that's what I'm wanting to try to get every month if we can. We don't need to lose sight of that individual. Hey, we need to, we need to keep account how many saved this, this next year. I dream nice the other day, amen, the other Sunday, amen, when these got up. I don't know if somebody's saved. And when you're down here praying with somebody, hey man, listen, let them do, hey, if they need help, you help them, but you let them pray. You let them talk to God. You ask them if you think they're struggling, and hey, and before they get up, say, hey, ask them if they gave their heart and life to the Lord. Or did you just rededicate? Don't be ashamed to ask them. Are you with me? But know the scripture, and if you can't totally give it to them, motion for the pastor, motion for some. But after this so many course, you should know the scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, hey, we need to, hey, Jesus, use a number. Hey, don't lose sight of it. The, 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 hey, glory to God, the, the number of bus visits, the saved, the rededicated. Jesus, hey, we, you know what, preacher, it's all about number. No, we love people. We love people. Don't get our priorities wrong. Be sincere. Why? You, glory to God. Don't you think, how many believe this preacher is sincere? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to pray, Lord, enlarge our coast. Amen. Amen. We need to let, hey, we need to have a heart for souls. Some of you already marked it off. I hope you've not. Some of y'all may mark it off. I can't do that. Then you're being disobedient to the word of God. 15 after, I'm going to try to hurry. Last point. That was the introduction. No, I'm teasing. The numerical or the mathematics or the numerical value of the Great Commission. The value of the Great Commission. That's the title. The value of the Great Commission. What was the Great Commission? It's to get them saved, point them to Christ, get them right with God, get them to walk the aisle to water baptism, and teach them to win a soul. Teach them how to soul win. Amen. Teach them to win souls for the Lord. If I would have started preaching that the first day this church was established, I failed through the years. I pray, hey, I preached on soul winning through the years. I've even took, I've even took, hey, amen, Wednesday nights and, and had you to mark in your Bibles from scripture to scripture to show you where to go. Hey, amen. But I have failed. I fa and God forgive me. But if I'd have started this, hey, amen, listen and keep it up. Just because we go through this, hey, amen, and, and give it to you, glory to God. Do you realize, and this is getting. Just bear with me is all I can say. Do you realize if we just win, if each individual could just win one soul a week, preacher, that's just impossible. Yeah, it's impossible if you have that attitude. Amen. 
How many's got some of these church cards and put them in your car and say, well, I'm going to just hand it to somebody? You and your convert that you went to the Lord, I'm talking about fulfilling the Great Commission. If you just won one person to the Lord, one year, in one year, if you, if you and your convert You just won one. Can I get a win? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what one what one plus one was? <laughs> you know what? Hey, in one, glory to God, in two, in two, in two years, that'd be four. In three years, that'd be eight. So preacher, that ain't nothing. It's going to start with somebody. Can we say we added four? Hey, can we say there have been four saved last year? Hey, man, still here. Can we say there have been eight saved last year? And they're still here. Hey, four years, that'd be 16. 16 more. Hey, glory to God, if we keep and teach, and hey, hey, if we get them down the aisle and we get them baptized, hey, man, and they get, get in a, hey, glory to God, still in a soul winning core, hallelujah, and be taught how to win somebody to the Lord. That'll be six, glory, that'll be 16 soul winners. All God people say it. Five year be 32, six year be 64, seven year be 128. And listen, if we got 128 in seven years, Amen. we'd have to start building another church. Amen. You say, oh, but preacher, that's, that's way out of reach. You know what I mean? That ain't way out of reach. I mean, listen, hey, in, 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 in eight years, be 256. Eight years. I got a point I'm going to make. Just, just keep a listening. Hey, man, nine years, 512. Preacher, that'll never happen. Nope. It won't with, with your attitude. It won't with your mentality. And I'm not saying, you say, oh, but you're focusing on numbers. No, we ought to be focusing on people being birthed into the family of God. Can I get a witness there? Wouldn't that excite your soul? Amen. What do you mean 512? 512, amen, born again, baptized, faithful people, amen, paying their tithes, amen, soul winning and leading other people, amen, into the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 You ever, you ever figured it up? 10 years, 1,024. 11 years, 2,048. 13 years, four, I got a point, just bear with me. 4,096, 13 years, 8,192. 14 years, 16,384. 15 years, 32,768. You say, that's just out of reach. Not if everybody will do the Great Commission. Got two, I got two amens out of that that I really heard. I, well, I got a right and an amen and a bless me, Lord. Hallelujah, bless you, Lord. Can I get a witness? Hey, 16 years, 65,536. Wow, saved, dedicated, people that are so winning and winning other people to the Lord. 17 years, that's how long we've been in this building, this, let's see, add it up. Somebody help me add it up. 2003 till December this past year. 16 year this past December we've been here. And where was we? 65,536. Now, you sit there and you're thinking, they ain't no way. They ain't a church that does that. You know why they don't do it? You know why it ain't a happening? We're not fulfilling the Great Commission. Preacher can't do it all by himself. I can go get my one. God's multiple, multiple, multiplication system is the Great Commission. How many say amen to that? Andrew, would you come to the piano? <laughs> well, 
I don't know if to do this or not. I'm always told not to. How many is 45 and younger? Raise your hand. We got. How old are you, Stacy K? No, 45. You got the hearing of a 45. <laughs> 45 and younger, raise your hand. I want to see all the 45 and younger. That's the majority that's sitting right here, practically. You say, what's your point? If you're 45 years old or less, and you had another 16 years, that'd make you, if you're 45, that'd make you 61 years old. Right? I believe, glory to God, if you just started with one soul a week, and by the way, you can be older than 61 years old to win a soul. Hey man, you, you, hey, you can be 80 years old and win a soul. Can I get a witness there? Sure, you can be older than that to win a soul. I mean, listen, I believe God wanted us to reach the world. How many think that? How many believe God wanted us to reach the world? Hey, them disciples, amen, they turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. I need a, do you know you're a result of the 12? I'll say it again. Do you know that you're a result of the 12? Hey, and how many Christians are they? You know why? It's because one started with one. Amen. Listen, the great commission, amen, that we just read, God believes in adding and multiplying. Can I get a witness, church? Hey, there is somebody, did you know that there is somebody God wants you to win? Hmm. Preacher Bible don't say that. It did in the Great Commission. There's somebody that God wants you. Do you know there's somebody out there that God wants you to point to the Lord? Win to Christ. You believe that witness to me? Hallelujah. I mean, listen, you, by the way, hey, and I'll say this, you owe it to somebody. Hey, you owe it to somebody to tell them. Somebody told you. Somebody led you. Somebody pointed you. Everybody here needs to be a soul winner. I'll say it again. Everybody here needs to be a soul winner. And if you're not a soul winner, you're not fulfilling the command of the Great Commission. Let's stand our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. I don't know about you. Hey, this is the altar call. It's already been given. I'm coming to this altar, and I'm saying, Lord, help me in this soul winning uh, study. Help me, Lord. Help me, God, to fulfill Sometimes that. Sometimes the way is long and hard. And sometimes I don't feel like traveling on. Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts And sometimes I just want to go home But 